Look at how dull this hood is. I was trying to make a reflection from the hood into the camera, but the car is too dull to give you a nice shine. Today's video, I am gonna show you how to bring this car or your car back to life. Go from this dull finish to a beautiful, extravagant shimmer. And I'm gonna show you how to do it on a budget and how you can do it. You don't need a detail shop. You don't need any fancy tools. Today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to clean up your car just like we're gonna do to this one. Start to finish the, all the processes, all the products we use. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. This should be a really helpful one. Let's get going. Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels. I have a quick and easy video for you today and hopefully educational, informative, and my goal is to always be entertaining as well. This is a 2010 Jeep Liberty. Nothing special, nothing crazy, right? I can tell you it's gonna be an absolute money maker because tax time is coming up and we bought this thing at the auction. The only problem is, look at how foggy and dull this paint is. You can see it here and you can see it here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we bring this paint back to life. Now I want you to take a good look at what the car looks like now and then what it looks like when we're finished. And I'm gonna show you every step we take to get it ready for sale and sellable. This car, super, super dull. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's all over the car. If it's the paint, if it's something on top of the paint, here's a good glimpse of what it actually looks like right now. And we're gonna go start to finish step by step to show you our process in bringing this thing back to life and making it ready for sale. Okay, so I want you to take a good look at this car. This is a 2010 Jeep Liberty. Like I had said before, this is a money maker. This is a great tax season car. It only has 80,000 miles, but it's dull, but also somebody like you can see like there's like a latex or a silicone or something on here as well. There's all kinds of things on this paint as well as scratches all the way down the sides. You can see all the scratches and swirl marks all the way down the side. But the biggest part is how dull this hood is all the way around the bumper and the hood. Now the bumper has, you can see these circles in it right here. I don't know what those are. I don't know what it's caused from. And you can see just this hood is in rough shape as well as the fenders and everything else. There's a lot of textures and who knows what is on this thing. We're gonna start from scratch. And then even looking inside all the lenses, it looks like this car has sat for a long, long time and then somebody gave it a wash to run it through the auction. So there's a lot we have to do. We're gonna start with a nice degreaser wash and then we're gonna use like a calcium lime and rust remover as well. We're gonna give it a nice cleaning, a nice wash first with an iron off. We're gonna use a calcium lime rust and iron remover as well. We're gonna give it a nice hand wash to really get in deep on this car and see what it looks like after a wash. Once we have it washed, we can see what we're working with from there, but it really goes all over the car. I mean, this car is it's just weirdly dull. So I'm gonna soak this car, especially in all the cracks and crevices, I'm going deep everywhere. And I'm gonna actually get the entire car. Now it's in the sun, which isn't a good thing because this is gonna dry really quickly. So you really wanna keep it wet. This drying isn't gonna do any good, but you'll see I'm getting like, if I look up there, all those spots are gonna be gone when I'm finished with just this wash alone. You can see it all in there too, and in these lines. And this is a combination of a an iron off and a degreaser as well. And we'll let it sit and keep it wet. You don't have to rinse it off, just wet it. Now you can definitely see that it has been sitting actually because if you look at the roof, when they did the car wash previously before the auction, they didn't even bother cleaning the roof. So I'm gonna spray up here too and let that soak. You can even see it all in here. All that will come off when we're done. And I like to open the doors, I like to open the hood, I like to open the tailgate because I'm just gonna let more get in. Like by having the hood open, more will get in with the brushes and everything and the solvents. And now I wanna talk about something that I actually love using, which is today's sponsor, Drift. This is a product I want to endorse because I love using it. It's a scent of the month. Now it's very easy to put a deodorizer or something that smells good in your car and the fragrance fades and you forget about it, right? Drift provides a scent of the month. Every single month I get a new puck sent to me with either the same aroma that I like or if you get nose blindness, like you stop smelling things, you can change the aroma that you want. You can pick and choose. This one smells incredible and it's so easy to use. Now it comes with this right here, which hooks right onto your visor. Now this right here is actually magnetic and sticks right onto the clip. Take that right there. Now the aroma lasts for 30 days and guess what? 30 days later, you get another gift in the mail and it's a new drift scent or the same scent. You can pick and choose what you want. Now this one right here, you can actually see that it came on a block of wood with a magnet. This is called Apre, it's limited edition with scents of leather and teak and all kinds of great aromas. I love the way this one makes my truck smell. My wife 
wife has one too. Every time I get in her Denali, it smells incredible. And it's a genius way to keep your car smelling good all the time. Drift, you guys are incredible. I would highly suggest and recommend it for you guys. With the link down below, you can get 55% off your first month using code FW55. Thank you, Drift. Let's get on with the video. So you'll see the hood is open a crack. All the doors are open just a crack. And even the trunk is open just a little bit. And it helps for all the sprays and solvents to get in there, which I'm gonna clean after anyway. But the brushes and all the bristles can get in a little bit deeper as well. I'm not gonna rinse the car off now. I'm just gonna soak it and let it all sit for a few minutes. If I rinse it, I'm just washing off everything I did. I actually want a nice soapy lather without the soap. So this is just solvents kind of lubricating and degreasing and breaking down everything that's on the car. But don't forget the roof. Here's the before. The roof was pretty bad. All right, it's gonna sit like that for a few minutes. Now this car is already scratched and swirled all over. We're gonna do a paint correction as best I can too. Like you'll see this is a pretty heavy bristle brush. This will get in all those fine cracks. Now you can see this side is gonna be the hardest for me because I'm working against the sun. It's drying as I work on it. I like this brush because it gets in all the fine areas, all the small cracks. Now you'll see it gets in all the cracks, which is what I like. I can't do by hand with like a towel or a hand brush. It's all the crevices that people don't think about that will really make a big difference when you're detailing the car. Don't forget the inside of the gas cap as well. Everybody forgets this area. Now I'm just gonna rinse off everything that's there. That way we get a fresh slate, clean slate to use a nice soapy, foamy bath. Now that all the chemicals are off, I can give it a nice soapy bath and this will give us a base coat, clear coat paint to work off of. We're not working off or on anything other than just the paint after this next wash. Now hopefully when we're finished, we're gonna have a nice glossy coat like you see right here while it's wet. I'm gonna dry it off, we're gonna let it sit. We're not gonna touch it until tomorrow, make sure there's no moisture anywhere in between all the cracks and crevices. And then we're gonna start with paint correction and really getting this thing back to life our way. Okay, so we washed this car outside. We did an iron off treatment. Like we really went through this thing to make sure it was just stripped down to this dull finish right now. And you can really see it is dull. I mean, bummer. I don't know what happened to it, but we're gonna bring it back to life. There's a couple things that we did since it's been washed. Now you'll see this water running down right here. We do not want this. So we did a squeegee to it, we did a chamois to it, and then we took some compressed air and tried to blow out all the cracks and crevices so all these areas to get all the water and moisture out. We don't want water running down because it will react with the waxes and the coatings that we're using. Not like terribly negative, it's just not gonna let the wax adhere properly. So we're gonna give it a multiple different coatings now to try to get this thing back to life and I'm gonna show you how we do each one of them. So I mentioned this before in this video, Rasul is here to learn. You can see Rasul Sula back there, Wade, there he is back there. He's here to learn. So he's learning just like you are, which is, you know, works well for everybody because you get to see what he's seeing. All right, I'm gonna do a tape line right down the middle. Now we've got rid of all the contaminants. It's nice and smooth and it's nice and dull. The next thing we're gonna do is clay bar. What is clay bar? It's literally this, a bar of clay. We're gonna keep it wet. I'm gonna spray on. Did it come with like uh, wax to spray on? Yeah, it came with instant detailer. So like quick spray wax. We're gonna spray it on one side of the hood and we're gonna use the clay bar. Now the clay bar goes on and you wanna keep folding it over itself. That way you don't 
pick up any contaminants on the paint and then just keep rubbing it all over the car. You keep folding the clay so it picks everything up, fold it, you get fresh clay again. All right, so Rasul, if you could be so kind as to hold the camera for me. I'm gonna open the clay. It's like a really thick Play-Doh, very malleable. Right, I'm gonna take the spray wax, hang on the rag. A lot of times you can reuse these too. Did this come with a case? Usually comes in like a, a plastic case to keep your clay bar in. All right, so I'm gonna spray it on one section, keep it wet. Now, if you look at how glossy this is wet, I'm hoping that the entire car comes out this way. I'm gonna take the clay bar and rub it on, okay? Actually kind of smells like cinnamon. So this is getting all the imperfections that like the stip on top of the paint. I could actually I could feel it catching certain areas. It's gonna take everything off the top and absorb it. You can actually see it. That looks like paint actually. I think paint's coming off. So I'm gonna rub it on everything. And as I go, like I don't need to yet, I'm gonna fold the clay bar over itself. So you'll start to see things, imperfections in the clay. I'm gonna just fold it over and I have new clay again. Now I wanna keep it wet the whole time, okay? So the entire hood is gonna be wet. You look in here, you can see that it's taking things off the hood. Finished product, you can see how much came off of this clay. And again, to reuse it, you just fold it over. Next, I'm just gonna wipe it off with a fresh cloth. All right, now I'm gonna go over some of the products I use. This video isn't sponsored by anybody. I'm gonna show you what I use, and there are lots of products out there that you can decide that you like. So, first thing coming in real close. You'll see here we have different types of compound, different cuts. Now this is a pro speed compound, a diamond cut compound, and an ultra finishing polish. Now you can see right here, extra heavy cut, heavy cut, extra heavy cut. So we are way down here on the polish, we're way up here on the cuts. We're gonna wanna cut into this paint first. Now sometimes I'll wet sand this with like a very high grit sandpaper. I don't think I need to, we've done a lot to this paint already and I really think it's just oxidation. I don't think I have to cut it any deeper than what a diamond cut or a pro speed compound will do. Now there's turtle wax, there's Meguiar's, there's Mother's, there's all kinds of brands that you can use. Again, it's not sponsored by anybody. I'm, just, I'm showing you what I'm going to use for this vehicle. Now as far as tools go, there's a lot of tools you can use. You can purchase a buffer or a polisher from Harbor Freight that's $80 all the way up to $400. What brands are drill? All the way up to a $400 Makita or DeWalt. They kind of all do the same stuff. It's based on how long you want it to last. Like the cheaper ones obviously don't last as well as the good ones. I have a polisher. I'm gonna use a polisher right here. I got this one from Harbor Freight. But if you don't have a polisher, you can actually use a drill with a kit just like this. What do I mean? This attaches to your drill, you put your compound on, you use your compound pad, you wipe it off, then you use your polishing pad after. You can do it with your drill, but obviously this is small. It's gonna take you a long time to do an entire car with something like this, but I will show you what one small section looks like before we get into the bigger tools. So if you can come right in here, I'm gonna use a heavy cut compound right in this section right here. And again, the reason I'm using the drill is to show you that you can do it yourself from your house with tools from home. I'm gonna wipe it on. Now, if I just put the drill on the compound and spin it, it's gonna shoot it everywhere. It's gonna make a mess. It goes on everything. So I'm gonna wipe it on in the area I wanna do it. Sometimes I'll spin it this way and it'll get rid of all the extra so it doesn't spin off all over my clothes. And I'm just gonna keep a steady pressure in one section. Now I'm gonna keep going until the wax seems to harden or dry. Now remember, this is just with a diamond cut compound. A diamond cut will really cut deep into the paint, but it will leave some slight scratches and swirl marks. That's why you wanna polish it after. Look at that. That's just from diamond coat and some good prep. Now that same section, I'm gonna put a polish on. Now I'm gonna do this entire hood with my larger tools after to show you how much quicker it can work. And we're just gonna do this section to show you the difference after everything's done. You can actually see that it's cut, how much it cut into the paint right there. All right, now I'm gonna use an ultra finishing polish. Again, you can use any product you want. We went from the diamond cut to the polish. You don't need a lot. The more you use, the more of a mess you're gonna make. Couple drops, I'm gonna go right here. I'm even gonna go outside of my diamond cut area to show you 
how much even just a polish works. I try to keep the edge completely flat. I don't really want to go sides. You'll get a lot of swirl marks like this. Now you can burn through your paint. I'm going to explain that a little bit later when I'm using my larger tools. Shine right on that and get my face. Now this right here is what I was trying to do when I opened this entire video trying to show you a reflection. This is with a polish. Now here's a good example of not using your diamond cut. You can see how glossy it is right here where I use a diamond cut or a rubbing compound. And then right here where I just use a polish, it's still a little dull. Same with up here. Now that's just with a drill, a hand drill and a little kit that I bought for $14. That's how easy it is. Watch how much quicker and better the outcome is when I use some real tools. All right, now I have three different products and your pads, I have a foam cutting pad, I have a polishing pad, and then you can really use like a heavy wool pad for a nice Nice bright finish. We don't need that. I don't have it in the larger size. So we're gonna use a foam cutting pad first, and then we're gonna use a polishing pad. These are like 10 to $12 each. And obviously this one's starting to wear out a little too much. So this one's probably done. So we're gonna go with a different pad, but I wanted to show you the difference in like what used pads look like. All right, a little tip if you don't already know, most do, some might not. Extension cords. If I just put it in like this and I pull, it's gonna pull right out. So if I cross them and go under like a, like a knot, like you're tying a knot for your shoes, then go over, it's not gonna pull out. All right, so I have my foam cut pad on. I'm gonna put my diamond cut compound on the hood. Again, you don't need too much, this is plenty. Now some come with a handle here. So this one has a palm handle right here. German, if you remember German from the show earlier, German had a nice DeWalt polisher that he went around and had a much bigger pad. This is a six inch pad, so it's still actually kind of small. And I'm using an old pad, so let's see how it comes out with an old pad. Again, I'm gonna rub it on like this first. So it doesn't just shoot all over the car. And I'm gonna do one section at a time. Now you can also adjust your speeds. Now this is an orbital polisher or a dual action polisher, dual action meaning it spins, but also goes up and down like a DA sander. Your drill won't do that. So this will get a larger cut, it'll get a larger finish and a big more surface area. Now I'm not pressing down, I'm not putting any power I'm not putting any pressure to it. I'm just keeping it consistent and flat on the center, on the center of the pad. I can also increase the speed as I go. Now I want to talk about increasing the speed, and I want to talk about staying in one spot for too long. This heats up, okay? That's kind of what cuts into this as well, is the heat. You may have seen us heat up headlights with a polisher, and that gets rid of a lot of headlight residue. You can burn right through your clear coat very, very easily. So do a small section at a time before burning into everything. You may be going, thinking everything looks great, then you wipe it off and found out you burned through your clear coat. So really be careful, do small sections at a time, and get good at what you're doing before you just go at it at high speeds. If you're starting out, I should have said this before trying, try a small area of your car, maybe a lower bumper or a small corner of the door. You don't want to go dead spot on the front of your hood. I did this because it's taped off. I'm using this as the example. If you're trying this, if you're starting out, find a small inconspicuous area before doing like the centerpiece of your vehicle. Now I will usually polish the entire hood before wiping it off, but I just want to test it and see how it comes out. And that's just with a diamond cut. Now, if you look here, you'll still see some cuts and swirl marks in the paint. That is what the polish will get out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the entire section of the hood, and then we're gonna wipe off all the rubbing compound, and then we'll polish just this hood to see the final outcome, and then we'll do the entire car, so you get to see what the entire car looks like from the very beginning, how we buy them, to the very end, when we're done detailing them, right, getting ready to sell. All right, now this right here was done with an old used buffing pad. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. We're gonna use a wool pad now. You'll see how thick and heavy the wool is. This actually creates a little more heat than a buffing pad. So now we're gonna try it with a wool pad. Look at how quickly that happened, just off of a wool pad and some rubbing compound. So you can see the difference from using the right tools and the wrong tools. Now 
Now you can see one side. This is diamond cut, not polished. This is completely just washed. All we did was wash, do an iron off a, a decreaser. So clay bar, diamond cut polish, just a wash. Next is a fine polish. This will be my final cut right here. This will just polish the car up. Any light swirl marks, these should get out and give us a nice shine. Now again, if I just turn it on, it's gonna shoot it everywhere and make a mess. So I'm gonna rub it on, and this will actually go on a lot smoother than the, uh, than the rubbing compound did. Once that's polished, I'm just gonna wipe the polish off. Look at this gloss along the edge. Now, when I was a kid, I used to live near the beach and all the guys would polish their car and drive up the strip. And you could see in the sun, the swirl marks all along the side of their car. You gotta be careful for swirl marks. How do you get swirl marks? Up and down, up and down, burning into the clear coat, going at angles. So when you use the edge of your polisher, when you use the edge of your pad, it digs into the paint and you can get your swirl marks. So you gotta watch out for that too. And then afterwards, you can even use a nice hand polish and that'll get a lot of the extras out. So there you have it, the difference from original to what we did and what you saw. Now, Rasul is starting out, so I'm gonna have you use just the drill. It's, I'm not calling you an idiot, but it's idiot proof. You can't mess it up. A monkey can do it, all right? You just use the drill the way I showed you. It's a little bit easier. It'll leave less potential for swirl marks. And then as you get more comfortable, go to the polishers with slow speeds, and then you can work your way up to higher speeds. So Rasul, if you don't mind, I did this section. I'll leave you to the rest of the car. You can um, use your clay bar, then use your compound, then use your polish on the whole thing. And I'll show you what it looks like at the very, very end, what you do. So it's fairly simple once you get used to it and it's a skill, so you'll get better and better as you go. Wait a minute. Before we do that, the most satisfying part of this project is the tape line. Are you ready for this? Can you get both sides from right up here? So you can see before, after. One hour later. All right, Rasul says he is finished and it looks pretty darn good. Did you use the drill the whole time? Yep. Or did you use the polisher? I used drill. Drill? Okay. So the next one we'll use the polisher, but even with the drill, you can see how nice this car came out. You see the gloss? Like look at the, yeah. Look at, you can see my hand. You couldn't see my hand before. That is amazing. You did a great, great job. And we have already detailed the inside. Wow, look at that gloss. Now, quick tip, when you're polishing the car, when you're actually using the polish, if you do the windows, you get a gloss on the window and a rain protectant as well. So when we're polishing, like I'll polish the entire car, including the windows. Yeah, this looks incredible. All the way down the side, it looks phenomenal. You did a great, great job. And then inside he detailed it too. We always put these little mats down. It just makes it like, gives it the finishing touch. We steam cleaned the seats. We extracted all the stains. It wasn't me, it was him. And the dash looks great, 80,000 miles. And this car is now retail ready because we've already done the service thanks to the other guy over there, Dave. It's already been serviced. So now it's been detailed. Now it's been inspected. Now it can officially go up for sale. Huge transformation. And the reason I did this in here in like this dirty garage, yeah, we do hire auto detailers when we really need heavy deep cleaning done. But I wanted to show you, you can do it yourself with tools you already have at home. Now I wanna show you one more thing because when I started detailing my own cars, when I started this business, this is what I was using. Like I got this from Walmart. That's just a polisher, it's like a buffer. It's not gonna do much, it'll apply a coat of wax, it'll clean it up like cleaner wax, but it won't get deep in. You need like high speed dual action to get real deep in there. But we did that with a drill and a couple three inch pads. So congrats to you, thank you to you. All right, it's ready for photos, but before I do that, I'm just gonna put some back to black on the trim, just silicone lubricant on the trim right here to bring this back. And if you zoom in real close, come look at how good this looks. So here's the before. And now the black is nice and clean. Now if you use too much of it, when it rains, it's silicone based. All the silicone's gonna run down the side of your car. It's gonna look terrible. So I didn't use too much. I just used just enough to bring it back, but not enough to run off if it rains. And now it's time for photos and to throw up on our website. I would have used a polisher because it's quicker and larger. Rasul I made use the drill so he gets comfortable with it and I didn't want a lot of swirl marks, but it speaks for itself. Look at how nice this looks. So here she is in the sunlight. Look at how the sunlight glows 
off of that paint. It speaks for itself. You guys may have done things differently. You may decide that your way works better than ours, but I mean, we did this, Rasul did this with a drill. I would have used a polisher because the polisher would have been quicker, but the drill, because Rasul is new, especially with the sun glistening as the sunset. I mean, look at now, you can see the trees. It's incredible. This is a huge, huge, huge transformation. And also we painted the grill black, textured black, because just the chipped paint didn't look good and the texture black kind of covers everything a little bit better. Wheels cleaned up well. Paint all the way down the side looks amazing. That isn't Sorrel Marks. I know what you're gonna say, that's sun, that's the uh, snow in the background. That's actually a reflection, not Sorrel Mark. Look at the metallic finish right there. Let's try to focus in on that right there. Yeah, look at the metallic finish on the Focus. Yeah, this car came out so, so nice. Not everything we do is perfect. Not everything we do might be the way you do it or a professional detailer that took classes, reconditioning classes, but that's how we polish cars. That's how we bring it back to life and it works for us and it didn't really take that long and we did it on a budget. This really wasn't expensive like the products we used were not a lot of money. So I hope this video was helpful. That car came out incredible. I hope you learned a little bit. If you did, thumbs ups are always appreciated. Subscribe if you wanna learn more about car content, car dealership, life, all that stuff. Subscribe down below and the thumbs ups appreciated. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Adios.